from the University of South Carolina. Your news, your sports, your weather. Carolina News begins now. Hello and welcome to the final Carolina News Fastcast of the semester. I'm Corey Michael Peeler reporting from Columbia, South Carolina. From being in the studio back in February to now reporting from our homes, it has been our pleasure to bring you the latest news that matters most to you. Over the weekend, the United States saw coronavirus numbers rise to 987,916 confirmed cases with 55,425 deaths. Meanwhile, South Carolina saw 237 additional cases and eight deaths, bringing the total to 5,490 positive cases with 174 deaths. While coronavirus numbers continue to rise, Governor Henry McMaster says he will extend the state of emergency in South Carolina 15 more days, but the Palmetto State is getting some much needed relief. McMaster held a press conference Sunday announcing that the state received 1.3 million surgical masks from China. 90% of these masks will be delivered to Prisma Health, with the remainder going to the Medical University of South Carolina. Prisma Health says they go through about 1.5 million surgical masks per month. The support gives McMaster hope for businesses looking to reopen across the state. This is a great day for our state. It's a great day for our country. We're looking forward to getting back to work as quickly as we can, as safely as we can. In South Carolina, we want to recover that competitive advantage that we have had in prosperity for our people and make it grow and make it stronger. And this today is one step in that direction. The South Carolina Restaurant and Lodging Association has formed a hospitality industry resilience task force to submit a plan on reopening restaurants to the state house. According to the association, they will be watching other states, listening to restaurateurs, and working with DHEC on how to proceed with opening restaurants in South Carolina. The SCRLA board chair, Bobby Williams, says social distancing and sanitation will both play big roles in reopening the state's restaurants. Some of the ideas from the report submitted to the State House were posting signage, asking those with a fever or cough not to come in, installing touchless hand sanitizers at the door, putting a plexiglass barrier at host stands, and potentially changing to single-use utensils or menus. While states in the U.S. start to reopen back up, other states are wondering when it is for the right time for them to reopen. Carolina News and reporters Leanna Lamasello spoke to New Jersey residents on how they feel about Governor Phil Murphy's reopen plans. The state of New Jersey has had a stay-at-home order in place since March 21st. Not essential businesses and schools have been closed for over a month. With some states beginning to reopen, New Jersey residents are anxious to know when the right time would be. Some residents think it's too soon with over 100,000 cases and almost 6,000 deaths in the state. I think that it might be a little too soon to open up. I think maybe just because our numbers are so drastically different than some of the other states and we have some more cases than a lot of the states that are starting to open up. Um, if we open up too soon, it could cause another wave of this to happen over the winter and we don't want to have to shut down again. D'Alessandro is a non-essential worker that still thinks the state should take precautionary measures before opening. Governor Murphy has planned a reopen date of May 15th for schools and businesses. I feel like nobody really knows when the best time to open back up is. I think that it's going to be kind of like a, all right, now's the time and we got to see what happens and hope the best. Other people feel that New Jersey has been open for quite some time now, as you can see by all the traffic behind me. The only places that are closed are little mom and pop shops and hair salons. They're crushing small business for no reason. Some non-essential workers are having a harder time coming to terms with being closed. Giglio says she wants to keep the country from going into economic collapse. What is the point of us staying home? We know what works and what doesn't. So now we have to re-enter society in, with masks. So why can't we go back to work with masks? Not only does Giglio want to go back to work, but she has an underlying condition because she's pregnant. I'm one of those that are immune compromised because I'm pregnant. I would absolutely still go to work even if I'm pregnant uh, and just wear a mask. 
Giglia wants to be able to be there for her clients before she has to be away from them to take care of her baby. I have no idea what I'm going back to, and I worked so hard to get to uh, the level that I'm at. And just because now, like, if they don't want to open up until June 1st, I'm basically out of the game. According to Giglio, it is unknown what is going to happen when states open up again, but being closed is only slowing it down. To make everybody stay home, I think is is ridiculous because we are, we're, we're just slowing the, the spread. We're not really avoiding it by staying home. We're just slowing it down. With a reopen date of May 15th, Governor Murphy still says he's in no position to open up the state until he sees more progress. Some may be anticipating this more than others. For Carolina News, I'm Leanna Lamasella. Governor Phil Murphy will be holding a press conference today to unveil the roadmap for responsibly reopening New Jersey. After an abrupt end to the school year, a local school district recently announced they plan to go through with high school graduation ceremonies as planned. Carolina News and Reporters Chloe Rafferty shows us how seniors in Kershaw County School District will close the chapter on their high school experience. That's right, the Kershaw County School District announced on Friday that the three high schools in the district will still be having their graduation ceremonies in May. I spoke with two seniors in the district to see what they thought about the decision. Many high school seniors work hard to get to graduation, and they have a lot to be proud of. National Technical Honor Society, National Society of High School Scholars, National Beta Club. Paige Ward, a senior at Lugoff Elgin High School, is excited that graduation is still happening despite the COVID-19 pandemic. If they would have pushed it back too far of a date, like in June or July, this coronavirus would have gotten worse, you know? and they would have had to cancel that. And Cody Falkenberry, a senior at North Central High School, feels the same way. I'm happy that um, that they're gonna get it done in May, just get it done and over with. The Kershaw County School District posted on their website that the ceremonies will happen on the high school's football fields and seating will be spread out to accommodate social distancing. They say that everyone who comes to the ceremony will have their temperature checked and must wear a mask. Cody says that his mom even ordered customized masks just for his graduation. If they're going to have something plain like this, I'm sure they're going to, the um, district is going to take enough steps to um, make sure everyone's safe and um, make sure their health is going to be good. And Paige agrees, but she has some more questions. If I ever see my friends for the last time, what am I going to do? Am I going to like elbow bump them or am I, am I going to hug them or like, what am I going to do? Distance wave. <laughs> While Paige and Cody may not know what to do at the ceremony, they do know they're ready to graduate. They want to go to college and pursue their passions, one in theater and one in baseball, after a senior year that didn't go quite as planned. It's like celebrating what the class of 2020 has like gone through with all this coronavirus. That's what I'm kind of celebrating. A celebration that these seniors have worked towards for the past four years. Reporting in Columbia, South Carolina, Chloe Rafferty, Carolina News. Each student was originally going to be given 11 graduation tickets for friends and family, but has now been limited to four. The Kershaw County School District plans to live stream all three high school graduation ceremonies to accommodate for this change. While Zoom has been both a learning tool and a platform for Americans to reunite during stay at home orders, one group was horrified at what happened during their meeting. The Association of African American Students at the University of South Carolina held their annual spring cookout on Zoom this past Friday. The gathering was interrupted by users outside the group entering the Zoom, spewing racial slurs, wearing blackface, and displaying neo-Nazi symbols. USC President Bob Caslin sent out a tweet apologizing to the students victimized and stated that university officials are investigating. Zoom has since responded, stating that they have implemented more security measures for free users and encourage all users to report any incidents of this kind to either Zoom or law enforcement. In world news, rumors flew over the weekend as leader of North Korea Kim Jong-un was reported to be in grave danger following a surgery last week. A South Korean newspaper reported that Kim was receiving surgery due to excessive smoking, obesity, and overwork. 
Moon Chung In, South Korea's top foreign policy advisor, stated that Kim Jong-un is alive and well and that no suspicious movements have been detected so far. While North Korea tightly controls information about its leader, his absence from official state media often sparked rumors regarding his health. The Palmetto State saw a weekend full of sunshine and warm temperatures. Mercy Myers is in Columbia, South Carolina to tell us whether we can expect more of this beautiful weather. Mercy. That's right, Corey. We did have some beautiful weather this weekend and today, tomorrow, looking pretty similar. Right now, it is sunny and 73 in Columbia. I am here at Lake Murray. The wind is blowing just a little bit, so it feels fantastic out here. But as we go into this evening, the temperatures are going to drop just a bit. 48 tonight in Columbia, so we'll have another chilly night. Winds will not be as strong as they were last night. Taking a look at our whole state. The lowest will be up in Rock Hill with 45 and down near the coast we'll see some warmer temperatures somewhere around the 55 range. Taking a look at tomorrow's highs, a little bit of a warmer day. Tuesday's high in Columbia is 81 and actually as you move down toward the coast you'll see some cooler temperatures down there. 74 in Myrtle Beach, 75 in Charleston and Hilton Head. And for the last time for Carolina News, let's take a look at our five day forecast tomorrow. Again, it will be warm, 81, mostly sunny. Hopefully those clouds will keep us cool. Even warmer for Wednesday, we'll have some clouds and some stronger winds at 18 miles per hour for Wednesday. Thursday, we're looking at some showers, 40% chance of rain in the morning, high of 71. Friday and Saturday, we'll be back to that sun and mild temperatures, 50 as a low on Friday night. 79 and sunny for your Saturday, so get outside and enjoy that nice weather. And that's all I have for you today for weather. For one last time, I'm Mercy Myers for Carolina News. Back to you, Corey. Thank you, Mercy. This weekend marked the conclusion of the 2020 NFL Draft, in which several Gamecocks heard their names called. Our Naja Huff is in Columbia, South Carolina with the details and more in sports. That's right, Corey. Over the weekend, four Gamecocks signed new contracts, making it the most successful draft in the Muschamp era. First was Javon Kinlaw as the 14th pick to the 49ers, where he'll be joining former teammate Debo Samuels. Brian Edwards was selected 81st overall in the third round, and he's headed to Sin City with the Raiders. DJ Wonham and TJ Brunson will both be headed north, with Wonham selected in the fourth round to Minnesota and Brunson in the seventh round to the Giants. In addition to those four, five other Gamecocks signed as undrafted free agents. Also at the draft, despite QB1 Cam Newton being a free agent, the Carolina Panthers became the first team in the modern era to draft all defensive players. That's all I have for sports today. Back to you, Corey. Thank you, Naja. And finally, the Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens made the cutest addition to their family. Four Asian small clawed otter pups were born late December, but have just recently started to be more active and roam about their habitat. The pups were born to second time parents, Carlisle and Harley. The Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens invite everyone to name the pups on their website. Well, this includes our final broadcast of the semester for Carolina News. We want to thank you for adapting with us during these unprecedented times, and we hope we've earned the privilege of your time. While a new team of journalists will be joining you this fall, they will continue to bring you the top stories that matter most to you. From all of us at Carolina News and Reporter, have a happy and safe summer, Carolina, forever to thee.